It's a rare sight in the skies, but technically still a possibility. A Boeing 747 flying with five engines. We've discussed before how Qantas did this in 2016 as a way of ferrying a spare engine to one of its stranded jumbo jets. But are there any other aircraft capable of doing something similar? Right from the beginning, the Boeing 747 was designed with the ability to carry an extra engine under its wings. Although Qantas's 2016 incident is perhaps one of the most recent examples, it also did the same in 2011. Although we don't know how frequently this occurred throughout 747 operations, we do know through photographic evidence that ferrying an extra engine was done by airlines all over the world. So what other aircraft had this capability? Well, according to VC10.net, the designers of the Vickers VC10 gave it the ability to carry an extra engine under its wing too. The aircraft is powered by four engines mounted at the rear, thus providing ample space under the wing to transport a spare power plant. This was made all the more important due to the lower levels of jet engine reliability at the time. Vickers Solutions saw a pod attached to the wing route on the right-hand side, which was capable of holding a spare Rolls-Royce Conway engine. Before the 747, the Boeing 707 was among the first to take a fifth engine under the wing, even if it wasn't something that Boeing originally thought of with the Quadjet's design. On its website, Qantas states, we first pioneered the carriage of a fifth engine with our Boeing 707s back at the dawn of the jet age to save shipping costs. So if we take Qantas at its word, the main word being pioneer, then it sounds like things started with the Australian airline and its Boeing 707s. The carrier took delivery of its first 707 in 1959. However, in message threads covering the presence of additional pods for ferrying engines, there is discussion that the Douglas DC-8 also had this ability. This type had its first flight in 1958. Two newer trijets, the McDonnell Douglas DC-10 and Lockheed L-1011, were also designed with the ability to carry an extra engine. In the case of the DC-10, the extra engine would be transported with a special nose cone that would cover the whole engine intake and additional cowls or fairings. This gave the engine somewhat of an egg shape. Additionally, the extension range of the inboard slats had to be reduced to avoid impact with the spare. The horizontal stabilizer's takeoff warning range was also altered. So why doesn't the practice of ferrying a spare engine under the wing happen anymore? Well, as a contributor on Stack Exchange notes, one of the main reasons the 747 was given the ability to ferry an engine was due to the lack of large cargo aircraft available at the time. The 747 itself pushed the limits of how big a commercial aircraft could be. Thus, it wasn't until Boeing offered a freighter variant of the 747 that large engines could be transported within the main holds of aircraft. Since those early 747 days, Cargo aircraft have become more ubiquitous, with freighter variants ranging from the small 737 all the way up to the 7478 and, of course, the mighty Antonov AN-225. As a result, newer jets and their larger high-bypass turbofan engines could have their spare power plants transported in a variety of purpose-built freighters. Did you know about these various aircraft and their ability to carry an extra engine? Let us know in the comments. In addition to our daily YouTube videos, Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles and a podcast every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe before you go.